Hello everyone, welcome to this flight time video. Today we're going to tie a wire jig nymph and here is a little variant of the one I tied in Sweden. The hook I'm using is the Hanak H400BL which is the jig classic with a straight pointed or this straight point on the hook and this one is a size 12 and the tungsten bead I have here is a slot tungsten bead in a copper color 3.3 millimeter and to secure the bead and adding just a little bit more weight to the fly I'm going to take my lead free wire and this one is the 0.015 and here I'm going to put down about 10 turns or so of this wire and then break it off close at one end and then here the bead is just or the hole in the bead is just a little bit too small for the wire to get into so I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and just going to squeeze the end a little bit and then this way you can push up the wire inside the bead and this is going to make it a lot more secure and also a lot neater here at the joint between the wire and the bead. And before pushing this up I'm just going to put a drop of super glue and then push it up inside the bead and this is going to lock everything in place and then we can break off the tag. And here now the wire and the bead are going to be really secure. I'm just going to add a small drop of this super glue again. And here I had just a little bit too much, so I'm going to move this around to make a nice uniform layer all around the wire. As a base, the thread I'm using is the Uni six salt in white and this is going to help me build up the shape of the fly then I'm going to use the nano silk from sample fly the 80 knots is really thin so if you would use this from the beginning you would have to put down about 10 times as much turns of thread just to build up the same amount so it's really not necessary to waste such a good thread on just under body work and the variation from the one I tied before or the one I posted on Instagram is that I'm going to add just a little tail on this one so here I'm going to take a few fibers of this Coq de Leon and I'm going to bundle these and the length of the tail is going to be about the length of the hook. So I'm going to tie this in at the back, a few turns, and just make sure that these are quite together. And here they are just a little bit too long, so I'm going to pull on these to make them exactly the right length. And here for a dry fly what I would do is to take one turn underneath this way they will splay out just a little bit but on this nymph I prefer to keep the tails quite bundled like this and then I'm going to cut these off right up to the wire, this is going to help with the transition even more. And now for the main material of this fly it's going to be some wire and here I'm going to take three colors. So the first one is some small copper wire, then I'm also going to take some small wire in chartreuse, and then the last one is going to be some black. And here I've taken about 20 centimeters of each color and this is going to make numerous flies. It's a lot easier to work with a little longer wires as well. And then I'm going to align the ends. 
try to make them as straight as possible. And here I'm going to tie these in on my way up. And so you just want to start these right at the back where we tied in the tail and then bring this forward with touching turns I'm going to take these up the whole length and then with the thread we're going to build this base that I talked about earlier and here it's really easier with a thicker thread So just try to build up this nice carrot shape or this taper from the back to the front. And the smoother the underbody is, the smoother it will be to put on the wires as well. So what you can do if you are using some UTC thread, it's even easier as this is a lot or the fibers or the thread it can be flattened a lot more than this uni thread but if you spin your bobbin counterclockwise you're going to flatten the thread and this way you can put down a really smooth underbody and now I'm going to do just a half hitch and for this if you have a rotary wise it's really useful to use it, so I'm going to put my thread away and now I'm going to grab the three wires at the same time and here we want these to get started the right way lying right between or beside each other and also we want this tail to be in the right position and then with Touching turns, we're going to take this up the whole length of the body, and the few first turns are always the most difficult. So, if you have to, you can push the wires together with your with your nail. But then, once you get going, they usually line up pretty well. So, stay beside each other instead of overlapping and then once we reach the bead we can then take our thread back put away with the thread holder and then put a 90 degree bend into the wires and then going to do just a few turns to secure these and then once these are well secured we can then just helicopter or wiggle these off to break them and it's a little more difficult when you have three of them at the same time but just take your time and for now we are done with this white thread so I'm just going to do a two turn to finish pull tight and then cut off and for now we have both the tail and the body done or the body is not actually done yet I'm going to take a little bit of this Deer Creek UV resin, the diamond fine flex and I'm just going to coat the wire all over and this is really going to secure the wire and also enhance this segmented effect and these wires will not go anywhere. I fished one of these one day, I caught maybe 20-30 fish on it and you can barely see it has been used so it's a really really durable fly and this is exactly what I want when I'm fishing these jig nymphs as they are going to go down really fast through the water and to the bottom and there where there are a lot of rocks and things 
that can break one of these nymphs. It's really useful to have one that stays in shape. So there we put a thin coat of UV resin all around and then it's just with the UV torch and I'm just going to set this. It only takes a few seconds. And now for the front part of the fly I'm going to use the nano silk from Sample Fly. This one is the 18 oat in beige. So I'm just going to start the thread again, cut off the excess, and here there are many ways to go to finish off this fly. You could go with some soft hackle, some dubbing, some dry fly hackle. Here I have a few ones tied with a dry fly hackle, makes a lot of turbulence in the water, and here are the ones or here is the one I fished in Sweden, right above the one I'm tying, and this one has just a little bit of ice stub, and this is going to be the way I'm going with this one as well. So I'm going to mix two colors of ice stub. The first one is this ice stub in the color pheasant tail. It's a nice brown with a lot of green highlights. And then the second one is this eye stub in the color peacock, which is this green with a lot of copper highlights. So I'm just going to do a quick finger mix of these two. And here you really don't need much, but we want to have a small color or thorax on the fly. And this is going to make a nice transition from the wire to the bead and hide every little mistake you've done so just a few turns and then the last thing to do is to whip finish and here I'm going to add a little bit of glue or varnish right onto the thread this is the easiest way when you're tying with these beads as it's really difficult to get in some glue after you've finished the fly. So here a three turn whip finish and then pull tight. And cut off the thread. So there we have the fly actually done. And this is just a little variant of the one I fished in Sweden. Got a lot of fish on it and it's really durable. The only addition is this little tail which I think would be a nice addition to this fly. So there we have the wire jig nymph. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time.